Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and today we're going to be taking a look at an application for development directly on an iPad or iOS device, and that is an application called Continuous. Now, personal confession right up front, I've always had this thing for programming directly on the device I'm working with. Now, that makes sense. I like working on Windows using a Windows device, but this goes back way before that. When I was a little kid, I actually had an Atari console that you could actually program directly on. Now, the experience was absolute hell, but there was just something about that process that appealed to me. Later on, I got a Palm Pilot, and the Palm Pilot actually had some Palm um, software that allowed you to actually write Palm apps on the Palm. Again, the experience was horrible, but I was hooked. And pretty much every device I've ever gotten since that's programmable, I've always tried to program directly on it. And this is nothing new in the world of the iPad. There's actually a couple of applications. Some of them, or most of them, in fact, are aimed towards uh, beginners. But there's another one that's actually aimed towards game developers called Codia. And if you're interested in it, I actually took a look at it very early on on Game for Scratch, so back in uh, 2014. And it's a Lua-based game engine that you develop directly on your iPad. It's a very cool program. I do recommend you check it out. But what was just released, um, yesterday actually I believe uh, was continuous which is what we're looking at today now continuous is a full implementation of dotnet on iOS and I literally mean on iOS so you could program C sharp and F sharp applications directly on your iPad or iPhone and this is really cool and the coolest part is it actually supports CS project standard project files it's built on top of all of this bits of uh, .NET have been open sourced over the years, it's like uh, Roslyn is the C Sharp compiler, the uh, Xamarin libraries have all been open sourced recently, and a bunch of other stuff has all been open sourced. And what he's done is taken all of these together and ported it to iOS to run on iOS. Uh, as you can see, there is a price tag attached. It's 10 bucks US. Uh, for me, as a Canadian, it cost me about 13 bucks to buy this guy. Uh, and you can see here from the features, let me just zoom that guy in a bit, we've got uh, full C sharp 6 and F sharp 4 compilers, automatic compilation and running so you can focus on code and the results, fancy text editors with tabbing, uh, inline bubbles, inline values, etc. Uh, watch windows enable you to watch graphical output of your uh, program, inspect live objects as your app runs, create instances, call methods, etc. Uh, co completion with inline type information, use standard .NET file and project files, which is cool again, so you can take your existing CS proj and run it directly on your device, which is very cool. Uh, includes Xamarin Forms UI kit, uh, Sprite kit, and Scene kit. Sprite kit is the 2D graphics library by iOS, and Scene kit is the 3D graphics library on iOS. I actually did a Sprite kit toolkit, but it was with, um, oh god, it's not coming to me. Uh, the programming language that recently Apple invented, which is not coming to me right now. Um, but the same concepts will stand for you. Uh, on top, there's split screen support if your device supports it and uh, powered by a new IL interpreter. So basically, it is a full blown .NET development environment on iOS. Now, let's take a quick look at it. Again, this guy was released, uh, let's see, July the 6th, and today is the 7th. So it's only one day old. So give it some time to develop. It's very. Uh, juvenile in its, its implementation, but it is very rock solid. So don't uh, be overly harsh that way. It is a solid program, but it's just expect some functionality to come as time goes on. And this here is continuous. Let me just load it up. And this process is super streamlined. Now you see on the left hand side, there's a number of projects already there. So we're going to use one of their simple examples. Here's Pong. So loading up Palm, give it a second, and we're going to go on the right-hand side. There is your code. You'll notice it's tabbed. So up here, you can see you've got the various tabs. So if I came in here now and instead picked uh, Sketch, it will now load Sketch over here. So very straightforward process, but let's go on back to Palm. So here, actually, let me close that tab down so we've got no confusion. You can see the code is nicely tabbed in, uh, color highlighting, syntax highlighting, etc. Now, if we want to go in here and actually change something, so you see here we've, got, we've created a geometry node. Oops, it's not two finger scroll, it's one finger scroll. I gotta stop doing that. All right, so there's our geometry node. I'll go ahead and enter down. There's a couple of things to show you here. First off, they've extended the normal keyboard. Uh, so what you would probably wanna do if you were actually doing real development, you'd probably hook up a Bluetooth keyboard to this guy because on-screen keyboard is not the way to go, but this actually isn't as bad as I expected it to be. And they've extended it to all the various things that you're actually going to need for programming. So your uh, 
you know, your uh, brace brackets, your curly brackets, your parentheses, your square bracket, square brackets maybe, um, your semicolon, etc. So most of the stuff you're going to need, and especially your tab key, are all there. So you you can type and do most of what you need right here. I believe, yeah. If I hold down, I can actually scroll that across and get a little bit more in there. So your commonly needed keystrokes that aren't on your standard keyboard you know like the stuff you would expect to see here without having to go over and shift over etc are all available in that quick highlight menu right across the top now the nice thing is you notice here so i added this new line so there's geom let's just go ahead and type geom and then dot and you'll notice here we're actually getting full intellisense and intellisense is absolutely essential as when you're learning a platform in my humble opinion so this makes it much much easier to actually you know learn as you go learn on device and on top of that there is full help integrated in so if you need help with a particular question so I don't know if I can do it directly from here so if I hit the I key here you'll see it automatically brings us over to the Xamarin or related documentation for the particular thing you you actually chose and this is one of those things where if you had a newer iPad, you can actually get the split screen documentation, which I don't. Mine's an iPad Air a couple generations old. But if you did, you, you've actually got a pretty solid programming environment. If you're working with um, like an iPad Pro, a 12 inch or a 14 inch device, and a keyboard, you've got a pretty straightforward and pretty sweet development advice going on. Now you'll notice though at the top here, it says um, project cannot be built. There's continuous builds attempting to go on here. Now I'll go on back and you know, so you see here we got this bubble up here that um, there's our error. Cannot yeah, get that down. Come on. All right, now it's a little pissed at me for focusing on focus, but you can see the error message up there. Could not blah 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 from blah 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 blah. Um, if I hadn't switched out, we wouldn't have had that issue. Actually, I don't even know what I've done to it at this point. I think I've I think I've messed my code right up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just exit out of that guy. We'll start over again. Um, there is a continuous build process going on. Now, if you come in here to your settings, you've got the option of actually turning auto run off and on. I can turn my, restore my examples back so I undid the damage I just did to our Pong example there. We've also got the option of switching in and out of dark mode and upping and downing the standard font size. So if you want to see more or less, you can do it there. You've also got control over the tab spacing, etc., for each individual language and type. So. Uh, she's for F sharp, C sharp, text, etc. Now, let me bring Pong back up. So there is your straightforward code. Now you want to go ahead and run this guy. Hit the uh, play, this guy, right here. Now we switch over to watch. And there you can see, there is our game running in the watch window, like so. And if you click this, this guy right here, you can maximize your running application like so. Now, if you want to go ahead and create your own project, it's still just as simple. So let me just close that guy down. Now, what is missing so far, at least at this moment in time, there is no ability to set breakpoints and do traditional line-by-line -line debugging. And so this is something I hope to actually see in a future version. Uh, because for, you know, uh, non-trivial applications, you need to have some kind of a debugger built in. So hopefully that's something that they can add. Uh, but to create your own project, hit the plus arrow up here. And then you've got a couple of choices. So we go over here and we go, let's create an app. So we can also create a library. You can see here, so a library, a portable library, INS library, iOS library, sorry. Or we can create just a single file, like a script, a class, a UI controller, a UI view for the various different languages. Or we can get into like text files, XML, JSON, etc. So let's go on back. So we're going to go back to app and C sharp. And we're going to go ahead and create a console application. So my. App. Now, one thing you'll notice, standard extension there, right here, is a CS proj, so you could take this and open it on your desktop later on if you wished. Uh, no problems at all, so let's can't, oops, should not have canceled that, but, all right, so app, C sharp, console, we'll call this, again, my app. Uh, create project folder, sure, add to solution, no, you pick the location where you wanna save it, and then just go ahead and click create. And you'll see, there's the files created for us, in our, all right, so that was my app.cs proj. Okay, so come in here, go app.cs, and you can see very straightforward, the hello world application you see right here. So let's just change this up slightly and make this hello cruel world. Now you notice as we're typing, so 
So if I'm in the right line, I'll scroll that down, you'll see it's we're actually getting um, instructions on what that actual method takes. We can click it and come back into the help like so. I head on back in. So you do get nice prompting as you go. We can go ahead and run this guy. We'll switch over here to the console, and there you can see right here we got the hello cruel world as we went ahead and ran that. So we clear that out like so. We can go ahead and run that again, and there you see hello cruel world. Uh, we could do watch. There's nothing here. This is actually isn't a running application, and that is. It. It's a very clean, very straightforward, very normal application. Now, on top of this, like say I wanted to go ahead and you know add some classes to the application we created. So we don't just want to do hello world. We can just come back here to the plus again, go to file, go to class, call it I don't know, my class, add to project, and my app, create class. And there you see, we now have another CS file, right? So, and now we can go ahead and use this class in our, so we can do some somewhat advanced projects here, no problems at all. Now, when you're finished and done, you probably gonna wanna actually get your code off your device in somewhere. And this is one of those areas where iPads suck because they're pretty much these little walled gardens of applications and everything. So when you're done and you come in, so here's my app.cs project we've been working on. I come down here, hit the I next to it. And there you see, we can either uh, share it as a zip file, share it as a file, or we can share it as code. So if we want to go ahead and zip it out, just click share zip. And you know, we can just send it via Dropbox or, um, it should be like a Dropbox. I don't see my Dropbox there. So let's click here and see. Yeah, so I could do save to Dropbox, drop that into my Dropbox account and share it out. Or I could send it as a zip file via email or whatever. So it's always one of those challenges when working on iOS is getting your things on and off of the device. And they are here. They are in this version. Uh, they could probably be made a little bit more accessible. But for the most part, this is a, for a version one application that is doing something as robust as making it so you can develop C Sharp and F Sharp applications directly on your device. Damn, this is a cool 1.0 release. So if you are interested in C Sharp or F Sharp development and you do have an iPad or possibly an iPhone, this is one of those things I definitely recommend you check out. And by the way, that flickering is the end, if, if it actually comes through on the video, uh, that flickering in the background is actually the um, remote recording software, it's not the device. So that is not happening on the device. Um, the program itself is very smooth, very straightforward, very clean. I've had no crashes, no bugs at all since I've started running it. So this is a very cool program and one I highly recommend you check out. Uh, of course, it is incredibly niche. So if the idea of actually developing on your device doesn't really appeal to you, I can understand why this isn't for you. But if it does, I do recommend you check this guy out. All right, that's it for now. If you enjoyed that, please do click like. Um, if you, you like other game development related stuff, we do the, all kinds of stuff here on this channel. So do click subscribe and come on back. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. See y'all later.